Do you appreciate um, his trash talking? I actually don't even think it's that good. Mm. It's like, I don't think it's that funny. Well, Ben, as we sit here right now, you are officially one month away from this fight. I mean, this this feels like it's coming up pretty quickly. Yeah, um, you know what? I didn't I didn't realize that until you said that. Yeah, one month is tremendous. Um, it doesn't feel like it's been soon for me. It feels like I haven't been trained for a while now, so that's good. Um, I feel like I've been improving a lot in training, and uh, I'm excited for it. When you agreed to this, did you realize how big of a deal that this would end up becoming? Huh. I mean, the guy's got a, a huge social media following, right? So I, I, I realized that there was going to be quite a bit of attention on it. But now, um, you know, especially with the announcements today, it seems like it's going to be a really, really big thing because they got, um, you know, Bieber has obviously got a very large following. Uh, Snoop Dogg has a really large following. I mean, there's a lot of big names on this thing. I mean, does this feel like the biggest fight you've ever had? <laughs> um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> It really, I mean, so it doesn't, it doesn't to me, right? Because it's okay. like, for me, I'm retired. This sounded like a fun thing. So I'm going to do it. I'm working hard. I'm trying to be a boxer. Um, but, you know, for other things, I mean, those were my life, right? Wrestling, whether it was, you know, my, we're trying to win a first state title or trying to win a national title in college or the Olympics or the Olympic trials. You know, those are huge things. Obviously, um, let's see, I've either fought for or defended a world title in I think nine or 10, no, 10 of my 21 professional MMA fights. So um, it doesn't feel like that to me, but yes, I think there probably will be the more, most eyes on this more than anything I've done. Yeah. This will weird. likely be the fight that's watched by most, the most people ever. So weird, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you tell me, is that weird? It's, it's really weird. And that's uh, you know, a lot of people have an issue with it. And I think it's one of those things where it's just like, Hey, man, I know it's not ideal for a lot of people, but that's the way the world works. You know, these people who have gigantic social media followings um, and maybe they're not nearly as good at boxing as, you know, even say a lower level pro, but they're going to get a hundred X the eyeballs of a lower yeah. level pro. You know, a lot of people threw their hat in the ring uh, of all the people that Jake Paul could have fought. Why do you think he picked you? Well, I think there's a combination of, I have a pretty good social media following yeah. And then I think obviously he thinks I'm probably not that good at boxing. Um, and those are probably <laughs> the factors that, that uh, went into it. Do you think that your boxing has improved a bunch since you started training for this? It has improved, but my, my whole contention, the whole thing that I've said from the beginning is like, listen, if he's a really good boxer, he's, you know, I'm probably not going to do very well. <laughs> and, you know, I was in there with Freddie's and this guy, Gabe Rosado was in there. It's like, I want no part of him. Like that guy fought for world title. Like I'm not, I'm not a, that level boxer and I have no uh, illusion that, that I am that level. Right. Um, but I don't think Jake Paul is that good. And while he may look good in some of these videos and stuff, um, there's a big difference between being in the training room, being in sparring uh, in practice, and then stepping out on a big stage and fighting someone uh, who's going to be in your face and in front of you and hit back. There's a, there's big differences. So and I think the other uh, difference is you've been in the big fights before. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, and I know how to deal with that type of thing. And I don't think that he does. And so I'm going to try to expose him for what he is. Well, you mentioned Freddie, you were here in LA recently training with Freddie Roach. Mm -hmm. How much has he helped you improve your game? Oh, he, he was awesome, man. It was great getting to spend a week out there and just kind of watch the way he works and watch other boxers in his gym work. Um, uh, yeah, he, he was great. I picked up quite a few things from him. Um, then, you know, I've had the, I, I guess the luxury of being able to work with quite a few good people, but you know, he's, he would be at the top of the list. All right. So how different is training camp for this fight versus all of your other fights you've had? Um, well, boxing is so much different than MMA because it's such a specified skill set, right? You're, you're doing only a really small amount of things, right? There's no punching, there's no kicking, there's no elbowing, there's no takedowns there's no grappling no nothing right so it's like focus on this really small skill set and so yeah i've definitely gotten better at it because i'm focusing on one really small thing um and then the other thing is like i you know i did some stand-up mma but most of my stand-up was like how do i get close enough to you to take you down and right. uh you know if i hit you great but i'm not really all that worried about hitting you because once i get you in the ground that <laughs> then i'm gonna hit you a whole bunch um and so like especially the first couple weeks it was like, okay, 
you know, why am I doing this? When, when I try to hit you and then I put this hand, oh, it's because I want to take you down or I want to grab your head or I want to clinch you. Um, and then also learning just the differences in the clinch in, in boxing and, you know, feeling good boxers. It's interesting the way they clinch just, and it's more, more or less to keep their hands free so they can throw their hands. Whereas in MMA, right. We're trying to get a hold of someone. We're trying to control someone, take them down. Or obviously in MMA, we can also, you know, use the clinch to pull them into a punch or pull them in to an elbow. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's borderline illegal in boxing. <laughs> Boy, yeah, borderline. Yeah, you, can wear, you can go with a few of them. Say, do you sorry, think that any, again. do you think maybe your instincts will kick in here and maybe you'll revert back to some of that wrestling stuff by accident? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, okay. I think I'm smart enough at this point in time to, uh, you know, I've been training, my, well, by the time I'm done, I'll train 12 weeks for boxing. I think I will be in a boxing mindset. Uh, I'm not doing a lot of anything else at all at this time period. So I think it'll be good. Have you watched Jake's other two fights? And yeah, if so, sure. what'd you They're think? Not very good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wh whether you like him or not, that Nate Robinson knockout, it's a highlight reel knockout. Yeah. So, I mean, I always say it's so hard to judge someone's skill level when this discrepancy is so vast mm. so nate robinson looked like he'd literally never been punched before he, I, I mean i think it was obvious he'd never been in a fight and you know so it's like well how can i judge someone against that because that was so bad Ev almost everything's gonna look good um and then the other kid that he fought was even worse than that i mean that kid was really really bad i don't know his name um so i, I actually don't think there's a lot to take away from those fights Besides that, um, you know, Nate Robinson got scared and he was able to land, uh, I think it was a big right hand. I think it was one body shot, right? That, that okay. Nate Robinson landed on Jake and that was it. Yeah. But Jake, I don't know, Jake looks, he looks pretty fast. Yeah, fair enough. Is there anything about his game that you respect? We'll find out. I mean, mm. maybe, we'll see. I mean, he, he talks it's a lot so of hard. trash. Again, it's so hard to, to judge when you're telling... Judge this guy based on a fight with Nate Robinson. Judge this guy based on a fight with some other jabroni. It's so hard, right? Anyone, anyone would look good against those guys. Do you appreciate um, his trash talking? I actually don't even think it's that good. Mm. It's like, I don't think it's that funny. Hmm. Yeah, and I appreciate a good trash talker, uh, of which I don't believe he really is. What did you think when he started following your wife on social media? I thought that was like a teenager move. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like that's something like teenagers would get mad at. And, uh, you know, me and my wife laughed at it. And what did she think of being called thick with two C's? Yeah, we didn't, uh, she didn't really know what that meant, but yeah, I told her. So we're all good. She, <laughs> and I call her, th I call her thick Amy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just the ah, she's used to it then. Uh, yep. I don't think he's following her anymore though. No, cause it didn't work because we're not teenagers. Yeah. By yeah. the way, I need to point out this shirt. This shirt is so good. Well, this is a ah, Rudis, Rudis oh. shirt, Drago. He's got the, oh yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. If this fight does go well for you, what do you think that you can gain from this? Because obviously Jake gains a lot. Jake, you know, really? beats, don't you think? Uh, I mean, I think at some point, whether it's this fight or the next one or one after that, I don't know. I don't know when it's going to be at some point, Jake's going to say, there's a lot better ways to make a living. I'm, 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 I think he's moderately wealthy and he's famous and there's a lot of ways he can make money besides getting a cage in or well, getting in a ring in this case and fighting somebody. Uh, so I think that realization, whether it comes this fight or the next one or the one after that. So uh, if, but if you win, like what's in it for you, you put this, put a stop to Jake Paul's boxing career. It. You know, maybe I beat up Logan, uh, oh. you know, and then I go back to my real life. It's fun. You know, I did this for fun. I thought it was gonna be a great time. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun training, getting back in shape. And then, you know, I'll probably go back to my regular life. <laughs> what was the most intriguing thing for you about this fight? Was it that you were going to be paid a bunch? I mean, that's, that's obviously a positive. Sure. Um, no, it was more like, Hey, I wonder if I can beat this guy up. You know, it's like, and that was kind of it. I've always loved challenging myself. And it was kind of like, he called me out and I was like, okay, that sounds fun. Let's go. Yeah. Are you being paid more in this fight than you ever got paid in UFC? Yes. I know. That's good. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, 
that is kind of crazy when you think about it. Yes, yeah, it's stupid. That means that if or when you win this fight, that means you make even more on the next fight. If I decide to do another one. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I mean, <laughs> this is dumb, but it's like, uh, I had retired, obviously. I'd been retired for, I don't of know, a year, year or so. Yeah. Um, and like, I got excited about training and I'm very disciplined. So I do my training every single day, but it's like, it's kind of nice. Like when I didn't have to wake up and train every single day when I could just, Hey, I don't feel like working out today. Well, I'm retired. I don't have to work out today. This is outstanding. You know, like, <laughs> so like when I was retired, I might've been working out like three or four times a week. And like, you know, when I felt like it, I get a workout in and like this whole, like, Hey, I'm training. I need to wake up and train today or I need to train twice today. It's like, damn it. <laughs> I got trained twice today. So I don't know. We'd have to think about it. It would have to be lucrative for me to want to do it again. Um, and the other thing is it, it is, I don't want to distracting is the right word, but right. I'm running a business. My brother, and I have five wrestling academies and uh, yeah. I run one of them. Um, and you know, being away from it, like, I don't like being away from it. Right. I've taken some time off to prepare myself for this, but I don't necessarily like that. Like I enjoy what I do. And, um, yeah. So if I, if I did it again, it would have to be lucrative. You know, they talk about freedom 55. You were retired. You were freedom 35. What's that? What's free? Oh, yeah, where you're, the, you're, you're retired at 35. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 so I'm not, you know, I, I still work hard, but I love everything I do. And I have, you know, I have the ability to, if I don't want to do that today, I don't have to do that today, you know? And um, yeah, living the good life. Did you go into that Damian Maya fight thinking I might retire after this thing? I had a pretty good idea. I mean, even if you won. Well, so my idea was, yeah. Okay. So if I won, I probably would not have, it would have been, it was going to come quickly. Right. So mm. my idea was if I retired, I was going to try to get, I figured I was, if at that point, if I, after I lost the Mazel, I was two fights away from a title fight because popularity goes a long way in the UFC. Sure. So if I was able to beat Maya, I was going to try to turn around, do one quick. And they get, my hip was getting so bad at that point. Like there was just so many things I couldn't do. And I knew like, do my time is at this point, like the clock is ticking. So had I beaten Maya, it was like, I was going to try to turn around. I remember there was actually a, um, now don't quote me on the date, but I'll be close. I think there was like a December 7th card in, it was in Washington, DC. So that would have been like five or six weeks after my fight that didn't have like really big names on it. So I was going to push to get on that card against someone else. And then, right. I would have hopefully propelled me to a, a title shot um, because then Colby and Marty were fighting December 14th. And then I could have pushed for that right after. Right. Um, I, th I think that's how the timeline went, I believe. Um, yeah, I just, I knew it had to be fast, right? Because my hip was getting to the point where there, I just didn't have many miles left. How is your hip feeling now? It's awesome. So good. Like, if I, if I like were 10 out of 10? Yeah. If I would have known the results of the surgery, like if I could have seen that, yeah, I would have done it years ago. Um, I just like, I knew a bunch of the things were from my hip, but like there was a bunch more things that were happening because of my hip that I didn't know were happening because of my hip. And so had I been able to predict or had I been able to know what the surgery, the outcome of the surgery would have been, I, I would have absolutely, at, at the very least, I would have for sure done it right when I retired from one championship was, which was November of 2017. I would have done it right then and there for sure. Right. If we take it to the fight before that, there's a lot of comments online going, oh man, he doesn't stand a chance against Jake Paul. I saw how the Masvidal fight went. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem fair though to judge this fight based on one knockout. I mean, if you're, if you're under the illusion that social media is fair and people on there are smart, you're going to be really disappointed. <laughs> really, really disappointed. Um, so I would take everything that you read on Instagram comments or Twitter comments with a grain of salt. Um, listen, I hit with a good shot. It was the only time in 21 professional fights that I was stunned or knocked down. And man, it happens sometimes. It happened at a really bad time for me. What do you remember from that fight? Nothing. Nothing. Nope. Do you remember anything? Like, do you remember the fight starting? I remember um, the, like the staring at him uh, in the pre-fight thing. And that's it. And then what's the first thing you remember after that? Uh, I was in the hospital with my wife. No way. Yeah. And I was your wife telling you about all the things like, obviously you were conscious. She didn't tell me. Time. I was just like, I kind of like, I remember, I mean, the first thing I remember is I, I was like, I remember said, Hey, what's up? And I'm like, Oh, I'm in the hospital. It probably didn't go so well, huh? 
And then I, I remember thinking like, I didn't feel like super sweaty or sore. So I'm like, shit, it must've been fast, huh? And huh. she's like, yup. And I'm like, uh, F, F, you know? And then, uh, now then that was it. I went to the after party. Did you, <laughs> you, you went to the after party? Yeah. My friends you, were there. I would. Yeah. Did you have any point where like, you know, you hear sometimes when guys wake up from a knockout where, you know, they can't figure out what day it is or what city they're no, in. No, or... not at all. Once it was there. So I actually, the first memory was, I remember Luke Rockhold was right in front of me. And I thought, well, that was our first thing. like, fuck, in the hospital. Luke Rockhold's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Amy was right there. I'm like, uh, Amy, I'm in the hospital, huh? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, uh, damn it. Mm. Yeah. How, how did you envision, obviously that's not how you envision, you know, that yeah. fight ending. What was the game plan for that fight? Uh, take it on and beat him up. He doesn't, he doesn't wrestle all that well as evidence between, you know, and that's why I, I said the Marty fight the second time is kind of dumb because who's been won five rounds to zero, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't people are claiming it's competitive, but I think that's like, cause they, they want to remember it that way. Cause they like George a lot more than they like Usman. Usman's very unlikable. So they want to remember it as being relatively competitive when it really wasn't. Um, and then, you know, if you look at other fights, Damian Maya wrestled them. Like there's a whole bunch of people who've taken George down a whole bunch. And that, that was the game plan. That's something I've done better than almost anyone, you know, right. I mean, really Khabib and Damian Maya. And there's very few people who have been as effective with their takedowns as I have. Yeah. Um, so that was the plan. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are just finding out about Ben Askren for the first time because yeah, of this, fair. you know, big fight. So if they go back through all your pro fights, which one should they watch to get a real good feeling for who you are and what you do? Um, well, the ones I would say was uh, where I kind of at my pinnacle would be. Um, I don't know about my pinnacle, but when I, because I would say I stayed at a high level for a while, but like when I kind of like hit the curve and was really performing at a really high level would be D Douglas Lima would be the first one. Okay. And um, so I, I, so if we kind of go back a little further, I would say, I, you know, I started fighting and I won the Bellator belt 18 months into my fighting career. So even when I won the Bellator belt, I was like, I was still figuring it out. Like I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was like, I was getting there. Yeah. And so it took me even a few fights after that. And I think Douglas Lima was, I want to say my third title defense. So that fight, the Amasu fight, and then the uh, Koreshkov fight were three fights in a row where I was just uber dominant. I didn't, none, none of the rounds were competitive. I won every single round very easily. Uh, I, I finally, um, so Lima was a decision, but then after that, that broke. I had a whole bunch of decisions in a row. And then after Lima, Kreshkov and Amasu were finishes, then I had a whole bunch of finishes in a row. And so it was like, I, you know, I, I really started figuring MMA out. So that would kind of be like the stretch. And then, you know, I was very dominant in one championship uh, all the way up until my retirement. I mean, and you're 19 and 0 when you, before you lost your first match, do you ever think like, I'm going to go undefeated my whole career? Well, I was, I, I, re I retired undefeated. I mean, right. I was 18 and 0, I retired and the circumstances uh, to which I unretired were totally unpredictable. I mean, I, I said, I will retire if I get to fight the best guys in the world. How that's going to happen, I don't know. Mm. Um, and a trade was never in the cards. I, I never thought, oh, I'm going to get traded. Like that never happened before then. It has not happened since then. I actually think they should do it more often. I think it was a pretty cool thing and people really, really liked it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like I was retired undefeated. I was done. And I was off for what I, I saw my, I fought November of 2017 and I retired. That was my retirement fight. And then I didn't fight again until March of 2019. So, you know, a 16 month gap or so. Um, yeah. I mean, and then obviously my plan when I came to the UFC was to really, my deal was to win three fights, get the belt and retire. I again. also feel like your, your plan coming to UFC was to just like pester Dana White as much as you possibly could. I do, of course. <laughs> you were very successful in doing that. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He seemed and, to... I think both enjoy that and also hate that. Yeah. I mean, I think he enjoyed it because, uh, you know, I was able to bring up a whole bunch of pay-per-view buys, which, uh, you know, that always gets you on Dan's good side. Well, I mean, he's put a million dollars on you for this fight. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Right. You believe that? Uh, listen, Dana loves to gamble and he knows fighting. And so, yeah, seems reasonable for him.
It, but Snoop Dogg has bet two million against you. Well, Snoop Dogg knows nothing about fighting, and I guess he <laughs> likes to waste money, so that's also reasonable. Have you met Snoop Dogg? I have not met Snoop Dogg. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that I will, or maybe I won't, because I already I already talked shit to him a little bit on Twitter. So who knows? Well, you're gonna meet everybody that night. I feel like. Uh, I so who knows? Maybe they'll have me in a dressing room, um, and I won't be able to. Maybe I will. Who, who knows? I guess we will just wait and see until April 17th. You're gonna get a knock on the door, and it's gonna be Justin Bieber. <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? That's exactly what's gonna happen. Uh, that would be cool, I guess. I mean, some, some, one of these damn musicians has got to be on my side. They can't all love Jake Paul. Someone's got to think he's an idiot. That's right. We need to find a musician that is going to bet on Ben Askren. We do. Who could I it be? I would like, well, let's see. My favorite guy right now is Post Malone. There we go. And, uh, right, I, I also love Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac, but they are passed away. And then I really love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, they are one of the greatest bands of all time. So, and you know what? Actually, they're UFC fans, so maybe they can bet on me. Maybe, maybe someone from Red Hot Chili Peppers could put a million on you. There we go. That the fact weird. that we're talking about people betting a million plus dollars on this fight is, that's a lot. It's awesome, right? <laughs> it, I mean, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. I, 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 we're still another month to go. Like, there's still going to be some time for all this to sink in and realize like how bizarre all this is. Well, yeah, I mean, we had the press conference next week in Vegas, so that, that's probably going to be pretty wild. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be really wild. Really wild. <laughs> you know, when you look back at your career and all the accolades you had in wrestling, I'm really curious if WWE ever reached out to you because they yeah, love yeah, high down, level. I went down there in wrestling. October. What's that? I went down there in October to the Performance Center. Mm -hmm. and how'd that go uh it was fun they were really cool but at no point like your collegiate career they ever reached out to you uh well yeah there was this guy named jerry briscoe um you know gerald briscoe Briscoe, yeah it's a legend he's great he would always come to all the ncaa tournaments and actually you know the thing he always used to tell me he would tell me like every single year ben if you were if you were over 200 pounds i could make you a million dollars and i said jerry i'm not gonna be that big ever so sorry and i want to end up on wrestling olympics so yeah, i'm just not not all that interested um you know and so actually when i was at the performance center jerry came over and just you know hung, i was there for two days hung out with me and we uh bullshitted and yeah, he's a great guy so does this mean there's a possibility that after this <laughs> fight we could see you in wwe um i left with an open door there um I don't, again, right? I'm running my wrestling academy business. I don't think it's something I would do full time. I would be, you know, I would be interested in doing a little something with them. They were so cool. I really, I really liked everyone I met. They run a really professional, uh, really professional operation down there. It was awesome. Well, don't you want to become a millionaire? I am. <laughs> I meant the Gerald Briscoe thing, what he's talking about. Well, I already am. I just accomplished it a different way. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I'm it, good. I'm golden. It, it would be interesting, though, to see you in WWE. Maybe, maybe I'll do one match. You never know. I guess, yeah, we'll never know. Yeah. Funky's a great WWE name. It would be, yeah. I mean, I'd play myself, obviously. But yeah, I'd go in there, tie someone in a knot real quick and be done with it. <laughs> Who was the first person to give you that nickname, Funky? Uh, it was one of my college teammates. He showed up at to the NCAA tournament with... Uh, it was just a picture of me, and then it just said Funky on it. And that was... Uh, <laughs> and then a whole bunch of people went nuts over it. And the next year we made uh, you know, you can't, NCAA athletes can't sell merchandise because the NCAA is a corrupt organization. Uh, but we, we, uh, we hawked him in the parking lot, $20 a piece. He sold like 500. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Right. It was sweet. Uh, we were getting rich for college kids. You know, you have the whole setup here with the microphone and the earpiece because you have a podcast. I, I multiple. Mean, mul- yes. Multiple podcasts. Mm-hmm. If someone listening to this is interested in buying Bitcoin, what position, what entry point should they be looking for? As soon as possible. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, well, I guess the, the smarter way would be, they call it dollar cost averaging, meaning you're just going to set a specific day and time, take the emotions out of it. You're going to buy once a month, once a week, whatever your time frame is. Uh, and put in there a comfortable amount of money that is not, you know, you're not going to lose your house if you lose it or something. Right. Um, 
but I'm sure there's a lot of people this year who are going to buy at the top of the market. Uh, so Bitcoin is very cyclical. It has been this, I think we're on the fourth cycle right now. Um, it will probably reach its pinnacle of this cycle somewhere in quarter four. Um, and yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people who buy at the peak of it and they probably lose money because they're going to sell it sometime next year when it you know goes back down and they're not going to wait long enough. Um, I also was an idiot the first time and I bought, not at, not at the highest, but as it was going up in twenty, uh, what's this? Twenty seventeen. I bought yeah, it. As what did it was you going What did you up. buy it at? Uh, my first Bitcoin. So the problem I had in twenty seventeen was Coinbase would not let me buy enough. They had a four thousand dollar a week limit on on purchases. Um, and then I also bought a few different ICO scams, which was that was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that, but you know I was new, so I didn't really know. Um, so I remember the first time my buddy taught me about, told me about Bitcoin, I was in Shanghai, China, and I was fighting. And it was, so it was a week before my September 2nd fight. So I want to say it was like August 25 or something like that. And it was just crossing $4,000 for the first time. <laughs> um, so I started buying some then. I bought kind of in the run-up of, of that fall slash winter. And then I watched it all the way through the bear market. I kind of like, I had this feeling that it was going to be the future. I didn't, and I, and I didn't sell anything at the top of the last cycle because I thought, I thought that it was going to be a long-term winner. Right. And sure. I, I wasn't in there for the short, you know, buy and sell type thing. Um, and I still think it is like, I think that Bitcoin is going to be the dominant monetary policy for the world in the next century. Um, so I mean, what is it? It's like 65,000 right now. Oh, not that high. We are, the, the highest it's ever been was 62, but I think it's, I'll, I'll just tell you right now, I want to say 57, 58 right now. We are at 58, 193. So it's a little bit down from its peak. Um, of Is this week. like still a good spot to enter though? I think so. Yes. I, so listen, I am not, I'm not giving financial advice and I'm not the smartest person in the market. I'm just listening to and regurgitating what other smarter people than me are saying. And, you know, on the low end, the smarter people think it's going to go to hundred K but I think the highest prediction for this cycle is 350 K uh, per Bitcoin. Um, so that's kind of right. That's kind of your range there. there I have not seen yeah. anyone who would be, be an expert on the subject uh, predicting anything less than six figures by the end of the year. Man, there was talk about you getting paid for this fight in Bitcoin. That's not I true. I don't see though. the point in that. I mean, I'm going, am I going to take some of my winnings and buy some Bitcoin with it? I am. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. But I just don't see the point in getting paid in Bitcoin when if I want to buy Bitcoin, I'm going to turn on buy it, which I will be buying some for sure. Right. But yeah. I just don't, I don't understand why people like need <laughs> to get it in that. And then in, I don't know. I just don't understand it. Is this, is this like a contract set up the same way a UFC is? It's a certain amount to show and a certain amount to win. Uh, well, it's just a one fight deal. So it's not like a UFC would have. So if you win or lose, you make the same amount of money. Yeah. Well, I'm pulling for you to win. And I feel like every fight fan like really wants to shut this guy up. Yeah, nobody likes him. I, that was you know something I definitely did not understand when I signed the contract. I, I knew the Paul brothers were uh, relatively well-known, right? They had big followings. I didn't really know why. Uh, I definitely did not know how unliked he was. I mean, nobody likes this guy. It's, it's hilarious. Do you like him? Um, he doesn't seem like that, like a guy I'd be friends with. I mean, I don't know, right? I haven't been around him at all for sure, but just, just a few of the videos I've watched, I'm like, eh, I probably wouldn't like that guy. I think you're going to like him even less after this press conference. Or maybe he'll like me less. You never know. Oh, do you have some stuff that you've been figuring out? I do. Well, I'm I can't not gonna show up to a press conference without something to say. That's the whole point of a press conference. This is going to you know, be like, great. There's nothing more annoying when someone shows up to a press conference and they say, I'm just here to fight. No dummy. We're at a press conference. We're here to talk. There is no fighting at the press conference. Let's sell. I mean, the last fight was one of the top selling pay-per-views of all time. Who Nate Robinson? Well, it was also Mike Tyson. Roy Jones. Yeah. Right. I saw that. Which, um, really? How many of the pay-per-views they sell? I, I don't know the number, but it was like, I think it was number eight of, of all time. For of all time. Are you sure? You've also got a lot of factors. It's COVID, everybody sitting in their home. Yeah. Obviously a huge fight with two huge names. Yeah. Yeah. You're in California. That's like a different, uh, that's like a different world as far as coronavirus is concerned. Yeah, no, it still exists here very much. 
Yeah, I mean, as you in know, the, in the Midwest over here, we're uh, we are uh, kind of getting close to the end. It feels like, and then like in Florida, they're running a sold out show next month. It's wild. What's it going to be like in Atlanta, where your fight is? No fans. No fans. No fans. I know we're in a football stadium and there's no fans. That was not my choice. I would have chosen to have fans if I got to have a choice, but it was not my choice. Yeah, this should be done in Florida. At least have a handful of fans there. Absolutely. Ben, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, no problem. This is fun. Man, I'm looking forward to your fight. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it also. Press conference next week. That should be fun. Uh, yeah, let's get after it. Well, you told Ariel Hawani that your prediction was a seventh round knockout. I'm sticking Jake with it. told Ariel Hawani a first round knockout. Is that still what you're going with? I'm going seventh round knockout, yes. There it is. Seventh round yes, knockout. Sir. All right. Ben, I end every interview by talking about gratitude because I'm a big gratitude guy. Okay. You see it here. Be cool. great. Be grateful. What are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Hmm. Wow. Uh, we'll say my family. Mm -hmm. That's great. We'll say Bitcoin because that's been tremendous to me. <laughs> and we'll say my wrestling academies because I uh, love coaching there. The Bitcoin millionaire. That's it. Absolutely. Ben, thank you so much. All right.